Good morning. Today is Wednesday, April 15th, and we are about to start reading from our new chapter book called Toys Go Out. I hope you guys liked it yesterday. I'm super excited to start reading this to you guys again. And I left you hanging with our three main characters. You guys remember? All right, did you say Lumpy, Plastic, and Stingray, right? And we probably already learned some things about each one of them. Most of all, Stingray. What did you learn about Stingray yesterday? Hmm, stop and tell me. Mm -hmm. Yep, I agree. She just starts worrying and just totally panics, right? And she gives a lot of her opinions and her thoughts on things without knowing a lot of the facts. But she makes it sound like that they are the facts, right? And what do you think Lumpy and Plastic think when she's doing that? Do they believe her? Sometimes, yeah, right? Because they start getting scared when she starts saying all these crazy things that she's telling them, which is kind of fun when you think about it. <laughs> all right, so let's pick up and read. Where Remember, they're in the backpack. They don't know where they're going. That's what, remember, that's what Stingray was panicking about. So where do you think they're going? Hmm. Let's read and find out. The backpack thumps down again with a bang. I would like to be warned, moans Lumpy. Sudden bumps make everything worse than it already is. The girl doesn't love us, and she's trying to get rid of us, cries Stingray in a panic. The backpack opens. The rumbling noise gets louder, and the light is very bright. So bright that Stingray, Plastic, and Lumpy have to squinch up their eyes and take deep breaths before they can see where they are. A pair of warm arms takes them all out of the dark, wet bathing suit smell together. Don't you love that description? I can just imagine that just by that description. Wet bathing suit smell. We all know what that smells like, right? The three toys look around. There are small chairs, a sunny window, and a circle of fidgety faces. Did you figure it out? It is not the vet. It is not the zoo. It is not the dump. They're pretty sure. But where is it? A rumbling noise surge surges up. A grown-up asks everyone to please be quiet now. And then comes a familiar voice. These are my best friends, says the little girl who owns the backpack and sleeps in the high bed with the fluffy pillows. You got it now, right? My best friends in the world. That's why I brought them to show and tell. Welcome, says the teacher. Sticky, unfamiliar fingers pat Lumpy's head and Stingray's plush tail. Plastic is held up for all to admire. You're here to be shown and told. She whispers to Stingray and Lumpy, feeling quite bouncy as she looks around at the schoolroom, not to be thrown away or put under the x-ray machine. The teacher says Lumpy looks a lot like a real buffalo. Lumpy wonders what the teacher means by real, but he's too happy to worry much about it. We're special, whispers Stingray. We're our best friends. I knew it would be something nice, says Plastic. Funny, but the ride home is not so uncomfortable. The smell is still there, but the backpack seems rather cozy. Plastic has herself a nap. Now, why do you think that it was uncomfortable when they were going, and now it's more comfortable, even though the smell is still there and it's still cramped, but it says it's rather cozy and Plastic has a nap. So stop and think, what made that different? Hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking that too, probably because they had a really good experience. They feel safe. They know the girl loves them, right? And they know everything's going to be okay. So then, even though it's like maybe still stinky and cramped, they feel inside. They're like, oh, it's going to be okay, 
right? Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. I like to feel that way, right? When we're like, oh, everything's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Just like we know right now with our house. God's got everything. We're going to be okay. So we can just be peaceful like this. And just be at our house and rest and enjoy ourselves, right? Stingray isn't worried about vets and zoos and garbage dumps anymore. She curls herself into a ball by Lumpy's plump buffalo stomach. The little girl loves us, she tells him. I knew it all along, really. I just didn't want to say. Do you believe that? Lumpy licks Stingray's head once and settles down to wait. When he knows where he's going, traveling isn't so bad. And right now, he's going home. Chapter two, the serious problem of plasticness. The room with the high bed and the fluffy pillows has bookshelves. Plastic never paid much attention to them before, but now she thinks they're interesting. Most of the shelves hold storybooks, but the bottom one has school books on it. Books about animals, the meanings of words, the sizes of oceans, and the ways of plants. When you've been to school like I have, says Stingray, interrupting one evening, as Plastic is looking curiously at the shelves. When you've gone to show and tell and seen the classroom and all the important things they have in there, then you know books are a place to find out truths. Truths about what? asks Plastic. Just truths, says Stingray, positioning herself proudly in front of the books. Like, what is two and two? Four, pipes up Lumpy, who's watching the sunset from the windowsill nearby. If we want the answer, explains Stingray as if she hasn't heard them, we can look it up. Truths like these are in books. That's what you learn at school. If you've been to school like I have. We were all at school, mutters Lumpy, still on the windowsill. Plastic wants to know which book would have that truth inside, about two and two. A book on money, says Stingray. It tells you how to be rich and famous. And how to fill up your really big swimming pool with liquid gold. And how to eat expensive chocolates for breakfast. And have banquets for hundreds of your best friends. And swing from chandeliers made from diamonds. Also, how to count numbers together, if that's the kind of truth you're after. Are you guys getting tickled this thing, right? <laughs> that's always my favorite. How is that a truth, calls Lumpy. Okay, a fact then. Facts are in books if you've been to school. <clears throat> calls Lumpy. I was right there next to you. Don't you remember? Where? At school. Time for bed, Stingray says importantly. The little girl comes into the bedroom and lifts her up to sleep on the high bed with the fluffy pillows while Lumpy and Plastic stay where they are. Let's find a book on money, suggests Plastic, when the lights are out and both Stingray and the girl are asleep. Lumpy makes a grouchy noise. Now that it's night and the girl can't see him moving around, he wants to go down the hall to visit Tuck Tuck the yellow towel who lives in the bathroom. Tuck Tuck always has something interesting to say. She sees a lot of strange behavior in her life as a towel, although she doesn't get out much. Lumpy particularly likes to hear about tooth brushing and fingernail clipping, things he is not sure he properly understands. I'm busy, he tells Plastic. So Plastic tries to get the one-eared sheep to look for the money book. Is there anything about grass in it? Sheep wants to know. I don't think so. It's the truths and facts of liquid gold swimming pools. Anything about poker? Probably not, Plastic is forced to admit. If it's not going to be interesting, I'll just as soon skip it, Sheep says kindly. She goes to play marbles with the toy mice. Plastic looks at the books by herself, reading the titles on the spines. One explains the meaning of words. One is full of maps. Another is about the wonderful world of plants. But there isn't any book on money or gold swimming pools. And even if there was one, Plastic couldn't pull it from the shelf. Why is that? Only one book lies open on the floor so that she can read it. 
a book about animals with pictures and details about how they live, what they eat, and where they sleep at night. Plastic finds the part about stingrays. They live in the ocean and flap their flipper wings like birds in the sky. She reads about sheep and how their woolly coats get shorn. She reads about mice who are part of the rodent family. And she reads a good deal about buffaloes and how they run around in herds. Ooh, she realizes, I can read about plastics. But plastics aren't there. She looks again. They still aren't there. Then Plastic goes page by page through the animal book, looking at every picture of every single animal. None of them look like her. Stop right there, guys.